Howdy y'all, this is Texas Gaming Industries here, and welcome to episode 24, part 8 of my Let's Play Transport Fever 2. In the previous episode, we began our new services to serve the towns that we have connected in that failed recording before, on the original episode 24, part 7. And in this episode, we're going to continue on with our expansion to basically start transporting freight, as well as connecting into Chicago. Now, basically, I set up a new route... To deliver iron ore down to the to the well steel mill in uh, St. Louis, and right now, train J one. Oh, dang it! The clothing got reverted. Uh, I gotta remember to keep an eye on that stuff. Anyway, so with the steel mill in St. Louis within the grasp of our system, we could now start expanding our operations. Hmm. There is a coal mine in Springfield that produces a hundred units. Maybe that could be our next load to transport. But there's also one here in Evansville, too. Well, let's basically start expansion anyway. We'll just curve this track to the right a bit, raise it up, place down an embankment, so just so, do that, and build a bridge across the river. Okay, let's see, what bridge should we use? Hmm... I mean, we have access to these girder bridges, but we don't have the girder bridge track available yet. But it does actually look pretty good, especially since this is going to be quite a modern bridge over the river anyways. We'll still need a little bit more money though, so I'll have to take out another loan. Let's see, let's get it back up to 200 million. Alright, 200 million dollars. Here. And place down a bridge. Now, we have two versions of the skirt bridge. A low ceiling and a high ceiling. Technically, we're not going to be transporting any mortal containers on this bridge, so we'll just do the low supports. But once that track for the girder bridges becomes available, I am definitely switching over to that. Hmm. Guess we'll have to continue with the bridges, I guess. Alright. Lower the track down to its level. Do that. And then we'll just curve along the river again. And we'll just basically bypass Springfield as that's going to be part of the middle route. We'll basically build a switch up here in Murray and basically connect it to Cairo. Quinton and Centralia to build a line that will connect into Springfield. Because, to be honest, it will be difficult to basically connect to this, well, coal mine, and then connect to Springfield on the same track. Hmm. 
Besides, I think we could just use this track here as a freight mine only, and just reserve the track going into uh, Springfield for passenger service. Alright. We're going downhill again, and we're nearing the coal mine of Springfield. We'll take a curve to the left. That will basically do it for now. We'll place down a 360 meter station. And basically connect this. And build an extension to connect to this mainline track here. Alright, double slip switch that, and now we'll have to figure out how to connect the freight station to our mainline network. Okay, let's see. We'll do it like this. Do it like this. And do it like this. We'll set up the switches for the freight yard this way, on that section. And we'll set up a double crossover switch here. We'll reserve this track primarily for those bring for the train bringing in sugar cane. We'll actually change this from a wooden stone or steel bridge to a wooden one. And then we'll just curve it up to the left. And we'll just add this track here. Which will allow freight trains to, to enter the freight loop. Let's see. We'll add the bank bin onto that. Connect both here. But we'll have to get rid of this uh, texture here. Alright. Now then. Let's place down the signals for the new extension for now. And of course, placing some signals on both the main line and the freight line. Some signals just before the bridge. And place some signals here for those entering the freight yard. And another one here. All right. All right, that should basically do it. Now we need to set up another freight route. This will be one of the first two coal trains, so let's see. This will enter on track four. Your blue, full load, 10 minutes. This will be Freight Train L, which will L1, which will be carrying coal. And I just realized I've forgotten to actually add the B&O Pothoppers for this scenario. So I'm going to cut this video right here and I'll see you all in a moment once the B&O Pothoppers has been added to the game. And we're back. Now, with the B&O Pothopper now finally installed into the game, we can now get back to work on basically building up our fleet, but in hindsight, we're basically going to replace the train that's in charge of this iron ore service. 
Although the gondolas we have are good, but look at the speed. 31 miles an hour. And this mogul is capable of 47 miles an hour. Something we'll have to give. Thankfully, these B&O Podhoppers are able to travel up to 50 miles an hour max. So, these could be very beneficial for our iron ore operations. We'll basically have a capacity about... Hmm... 720? Yeah, 720 units of iron ore and coal each. Which also reminds me... These B&O Podhoppers do not have low textures for the other commodities on the map. So the sweet potatoes, corn, sugar cane, cotton, all that stuff. So... Basically, these pot hoppers are only going to be used for our uh, coal and iron ore trains. Speaking of coal, we now need to get a train in charge of these coal shipments. Let's see. Ah, here's the depot. Now, although I used the Shea for the log trains, there is actually evidence that climaxes also were used in, coal, in handling coal as well. Because not all companies that bought geared engines used them for carrying logs. Sometimes they used them to carry minerals like coal or stone. Which, considering this climax has only 20 miles an hour, top speed, it's totally fine to use this engine on that load. Besides, I want to at least use another geared steam engine on this operation anyway. This will bring us to the total of 230 million credits. And still not enough. I'm going to go up to 235 million. Let's buy it and put it to work on, coal tr on the first of two coal trains. It'll be slow, but at least, however, the coal will be delivered to the, well, to the steel mill. All the while, our sugar cane train is folded up, with, is fully loaded, and it's heading up into St. Louis to drop it off. Though, question remains on where we can drop off food. Well, we can drop off food here, but we'll have to basically put it in a very, very obscure siding. It doesn't have a whole bunch of connections to it, but actually. Alright. This should basically fix the problem. Now, there'll be tons and tons of food waiting to be delivered to this. We'll set up a 30 mile an hour diversion over to this track to connect. Oh, too much slope. Nuts. Okay. Oh, nuts. There we go. Perfect. Now food can be delivered into St. Louis. Hmm. Anything else that needs to be done? Speaking of which, where is that iron ore tray? Ah. Oh, it's heading to St. Louis first to basically then turn around and head straight towards Murray. Well, I think in the next episode, I think we'll get started on transporting tobacco. And hopefully connecting to the mines at Evansville. And maybe build the extension down into Chicago. So, if you enjoyed this episode of my Let's Play Transport Fever 2, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to Texas Gaming Industries for new video uploads every Friday or Saturday, depending on my episode schedule. And, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye!